Hey everybody, this is David with Average Joe Investing, and I'm finally back from what's probably been the longest week of my entire life. So obviously I had two weddings there, so I had bachelor parties, I had to drive to Philly to pick up some family members, and obviously with one of those two weddings being my sister's, I tried everything I could to make it the most special day possible for her. But with all of that aside, I'm finally back, ready to make some more videos. And one of the things that I did as soon as I got back was obviously flip through all of the comments I've missed in the last week. And one thing I keep coming up upon just over and over and over again is it seems like a lot of newer investors, a lot of first time investors, people using Robinhood, people using even M1 Finance, a lot of people just focus in on just the numbers. And obviously I made a joke on April 1st because I had one person telling me we focus way too much on numbers, not about just what's in front of us. However, I mean, obviously when I do my stock analysis videos, I try to take a look at some of the things happening around the globe, some of the things happening with just in the company itself. So, and you know, just the economy in general. So what are some of those outside forces that are gonna make a company great or not so great? However, there's so many people out there who are just starting out investing that simply look at the numbers and just make a decision. Okay, this one has a decent price, the PE ratio is okay, and it pays a great dividend, that's a great investment, so they put their money into it and that's what they buy. That's definitely not the way to be doing this. So I know obviously I made the joke, you know, look, this is what happens if you don't look at the numbers at all. However, just looking at the numbers can also be bad. So in today's video, we're gonna do kind of a little bit of an interactive activity here. I'll show you three different companies kind of around the same price point, and I'll show you the numbers with them. And just be honest with yourself, write down on a piece of paper, write it down in the comment section down below, which one of these companies would you invest in? So in the first round, would it be A, B, or C? Second round, same thing. And in the end, I'll show you guys which companies are actually behind these stocks. And you can see for yourself, if you one of these people who pick just based on numbers, whether or not you're actually making a good investment. Because there's a couple of companies out there where if you just look on paper, you look at the numbers, they're a great company on paper. A terrible company if you actually, you know, have held them for a year or two, or you're a dividend investor. However, a lot of people, this is what they do. They're brand new investors, they don't really know what to look into. So all they do is take a look at the numbers and blindly pick and choose what they want. We're gonna start out this little experiment by talking about stocks that trade for under $10 per share. And the reasoning behind that's pretty simple. If you're a newer investor, you probably don't have hundreds or even thousands of dollars to invest. So generally speaking, a lot of people, if you're not in a portfolio that allows you to buy partial shares, your portfolio is gonna begin out with stocks that trade under $10 per share. You know, if you only have 100 bucks, you can still get 10 shares to start out your portfolio with. So with that being said, let's take a look at the three stocks that are in the running here. Starting out our sub $10 stocks, company number one is gonna be $9.90 per share. So it's obviously just barely underneath our maximum threshold of $10. However, take a look at that dividend payout. We've talked about dividend aristocrats in the past, depending on their sector being between two and 4% dividend yield. So 15.31 is absolutely astronomical. And no, this is not like that time I showed you guys on Robinhood where they said that Frontier paid out 50% dividend yield. This is actually a company that pays out 15.3%. And yeah, I just made a video talking about really high dividend yield portfolios. This one has almost double the number one stock in that sector. Up next, it's gonna be the PE ratio. It is zero, the company is not profitable right now. And if we take a look at the market cap, $1 billion. So definitely not the largest company in the world by any means. However, $1 billion market cap, that's a pretty good sized company. They're definitely not in that startup phase anymore. The second company is actually gonna be the number three most traded stock on Robinhood. And it trades for $9.38 per share. And if we take a look at the dividend yield here, 6.4. So 6.4% is still a great dividend. That's still a huge dividend payout. Obviously not nearly as high as the first company, but again, for the sector, this is relatively high. We're talking about 10.5 PE ratio. So again, it's underneath that 18 that a lot of people want to be under. And if we take a look at the market cap, it's definitely a bigger company than the first company at $37 billion. The last company is actually the most sold company on Robinhood right now. And like I said, it's a lot of new investors getting in at under $10 per share. So number one and number three both trade at under $10 per share right now. Company number three, $8.93 per share. There is no dividend payout on it right now. And the PE ratio is a little bit hard to talk about. If you look on Yahoo where they show you the trailing, it shows it's around 40. If you look on macro trends, it's about uh, 63. However, if you look at their forward PE ratio, it's just not applicable, it's non-existent. And the company has a market cap of $9 billion. So again, if we take a look at these three companies, obviously the third one here is gonna be number one sold on Robinhood. It's the most popular stock there. It is the cheapest out of the three. 
Company one has the highest dividend yield. Company number two has by far the most profitability at 10.5 PE ratio. And if we take a look at the market cap, the second company is also the biggest on the list. However, with all of that being said, which one of these companies would you personally invest in? If you would actually invest in one of these companies with just that little bit of information, congratulations, you're kind of the reason why I had to make this video. A lot of newer investors literally just look at numbers like this, pick one of those companies off the board, and that's what they want to invest in. And that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of making newer videos now, where we're talking a little bit more about what else to look in. Like I said, when I'm making my stock analysis, I'm trying to talk about some factors outside as well that are going to affect the stock price. But just for the whole game of this, let's go through what those three companies were. Company A, if you picked the first company, congratulations, you've invested in GameStop. It's a big retailer out there. Everybody's heard about them. Huge dividend yield right now. I mean, absolutely astronomical. They're killing everybody else on the block in that category. However, pre-owned games, not doing really well right now. They've lost over 20% sales year over year. A lot of people are going digital now. A lot of people just don't go to GameStop anymore. Hardware, they're down almost 10% year over year. The PS4 and Xbox One have been out for a long time now. Nobody's going out and buying consoles right now. And just in general, the company is just not great. It's losing a lot of money right now, so there is no P.E. ratio. And the market cap is absolutely tanked. This stock was trading for about $15 a share within the last year. However, their numbers have been coming out. Q4 was absolutely horrendous for them. It's a company that's going way down, and unfortunately, people keep investing in them simply because they're looking at that dividend payout and saying, eh, as long as they hold it for six years, I double my money. That's not the best way to invest. That's why you have to look at external factors. This is a terrible company that there's no way they're going to keep up with that dividend yield. You do not want to be investing in a company like GameStop. Number two is the third most sold stock on Robinhood, and that's going to be Ford. So we've talked about Ford before on the channel, great dividend yield. Obviously, they are profitable at a 10.5 PE ratio. However, they've gone through their own set of problems recently. So they've discontinued quite a few lines of their vehicles. However, it's probably, in my opinion at least, the best investment out of the three options you had here. The third company, the number one most sold stock on Robinhood, under $10 per share. Any guesses on what it is? It's Aurora. It's going to be one of those weed companies. So again, this is one of those companies. There is no dividend. They haven't really been profitable. It's a little bit arguable because they were somewhat profitable at one point. However, they're really not at the profitability stage currently. And if we take a look, even if it is about 60 times earnings, some people don't want to be invested in that. Your only play here is growth. And it's being traded so much that the growth is a little bit wonky. It's almost like buying into a Tesla or something like that, where you're kind of gambling a little bit. Is this going to be one of the stocks that really pick up? So for me personally, I think number two was probably your best investment. And that's going to be Ford. Then number three, which is going to be Aurora. Again, if you're into weed stocks, maybe you have that list as number one. Again, a little bit of a speculation play there. And then the worst company here is that huge dividend payout. It's going to be GameStop. It's a company that has just been going downhill like crazy. However, a lot of people that just take a look at numbers, that's the kind of stock they're buying because that dividend yield is absolutely huge. Category number two is going to be between about 25, 30 bucks per share. Because again, as people start to add more and more money to their portfolio, that's kind of the progression they go through. They buy cheaper stocks and they work their way up to more expensive ones. So in this category, we're going to start out with company number one, $27.88 per share. There is no dividend payment right now for them. The PE ratio is around 84, almost 85. Market cap, pretty big company. It's actually almost as big as the biggest company in uh, category A. It's going to be $30 billion. It's actually the number nine most traded stock on Robinhood. So again, we're going to see that trend of the cheaper stocks are kind of be, going to be in that top 10, top 100. Up next, we have company two. That's going to be $29.29 .29 per share. Kind of a cool price there, but again, just barely under our $30 threshold. The dividend payout, 2.05%. So again, we're into that area where it's kind of a comfortable dividend. It's definitely not the highest one out there. However, obviously it's better than no payout. PE ratio is around 11, which again, not too bad. If we take a look at the market cap, $282 billion. So now we're getting into one of the larger companies out there. Obviously not the largest in the world, but significantly larger than the first company we just took a look at. And finally, company number three. It's going to be around $25 per share right now. And if we take a look, 6% dividend payout right now. So the best one here in this category, the PE ratio is 6.91. Again, best one in this category. 
The market cap, however, six or $7.6 billion. So it is gonna have the smallest market cap out of these three. So how did we do that round? Which stock do you go with? I have a feeling I know what a lot of people are gonna pick just based on the numbers. However, let's start out with company number one again. So the number nine most bought stock on Robinhood, it's gonna be AMD. So AMD, obviously very, very popular pick amongst YouTubers last year. I don't really see nearly as many people talking about it this year. However, with them having the number nine spot on Robinhood, I don't know whether that's all time in Robinhood or just in the last year, but they're obviously still being traded in very, very high volume. AMD, obviously one of the big micro trip processors out there. Um, again, I'm definitely more of Texas Instruments. I'm not really with AMD. Um, I know a lot of people went to NVIDIA. Uh, I see a couple people out there with AMAT in their portfolios. However, again, not necessarily a bad pickup, just one of those ones that if you see the numbers on paper, maybe not gonna pick it out of the list. The second company is one that we talked about before on the channel as well. Bank of America, also gonna be in the top 20 most traded stocks on Robinhood. So again, we're gonna see price has a huge factor amongst those Robinhood users, mostly because a lot of them don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to spend, so they're buying a lot of cheaper companies or cheaper stocks. Bank of America, pretty good buy, really. I mean, the prices still make sense right now. The dividend payout's not bad at all. They could definitely grow that in the future. And obviously with that market cap, they're a massive company. However, let's take a look at the third company. And I imagine this is one that most people picked out of this lineup. And that company is actually Macy's. Yes, the company that has been closing stores like crazy. On paper, it looks amazing. The dividend payout's there. The PE ratio is there. The price makes sense. A lot of people can buy into it. However, if you take a look at the news, you take a look at the way the company's been functioning, probably not the best way to invest your money. Now, obviously, Macy's has had a little bit of a rebound here in the last year or so. However, the outlook on the company, the way things have been going, I definitely still would not be investing in Macy's. However, this is kind of why I'm doing this little bit of experiment to see where people are putting their money. Because if you went with company number three, you went with Macy's, you're probably not gonna be the happiest investor on this list. So again, if I had to rank these and where I would personally invest in them, number one would definitely be Bank of America. Number two, maybe I'd take a shot with AMD. Again, I already have a microprocessor in my uh, portfolio. However, I like AMD significantly more than I like Macy's right now. The first company that trades for more than $100 per share is gonna be at $116.63 per share. 1.5% dividend payout, so there is gonna be a dividend yield here. We're talking about a PE ratio of 16 and a market cap of $209 billion. So obviously a pretty large company here. This is why I'm saying some people might be able to start guessing some of these companies. However, they are the 21st most traded company on Robinhood. So hey, we right outside the top 20. However, we're finally getting to companies that trade for more than $20, $30 per share. The next company is actually one spot higher on that list. It's the 20th most sold company on Robinhood and it trades for $191 per share. Dividend yield 0.33%, so a very small dividend yield, but there is one there. PE ratio of 29 and $116 billion. Finally, we're gonna have the third company here, and this one's gonna be a little bit of an outlier here. $268 per share, no dividend, no PE ratio, $46 billion market cap, but it is by far traded more than these other two companies on Robinhood. It actually ranks just outside the top 10 at number 13. So where would you put your money here? Are you gonna follow the crowd and go with company number three? Or are you gonna take a look at some numbers that are a little more sensible? And those are gonna be companies one and two. Just to spare you a little bit of time here, company number one in that category was Disney, company number two was Nvidia, and company number three was Tesla. Now, like I said, I imagine a couple people were able to guess at least one and two on that list. And again, for me personally, it goes right in that order, probably Disney, Nvidia, then Tesla. It's just Tesla's one of those stocks I've said it over and over. Honestly, it feels like buying a scratch off lottery ticket for me, not a huge fan. So I know that experiment or little game was a little bit out there compared to what we usually talk about. However, like I said, I've kind of said in the past, you can't just look at the numbers and then people say, what else do you look at? And then obviously I made a joke about that and people are like, well, you know, if you look at the numbers, you can probably just invest that way. Simply not the case. I imagine a lot of people just taking a look at these numbers probably went with maybe GameStop. Most likely they went with Macy's in the second grouping. And chances are at least some of you went with Tesla in the third grouping. So again, not every investment's right for every person. Maybe your portfolio has those three companies in it. Mine personally does not. With my investing strategy, they don't really fall in line with me. 
However, it's just one of those examples why you can't just look at the numbers. It's why when I do my stock analysis videos, I try to talk about other factors in the company because a lot of times people don't. Unfortunately, a lot of new investors just go into that top 100 most traded stocks list and they build a portfolio out of that. And for a lot of people, those stocks are not the ones that make the most sense for them. So obviously in the next couple of videos, we can get a lot more into portfolio building, what makes the stock right for you, what makes the stock not right for you, and some more things to necessarily look at because we're not talking about just numbers. We're not talking about just outside factors or, you know, sodas, we're not just looking at what's in front of us. So obviously we're gonna get into a lot more portfolio building going forward. Unfortunately, in the next 10 days, my wife's actually on spring break. So unfortunately, because I'm not gonna be making a lot of videos, I will be catching up the website a little bit. I've kind of neglected that lately. However, I'll be back in probably the next week or so. I might have a couple pre-recorded uh, videos I'll be putting out over the next week or so. However, then when I do come back from that break, because we are gonna go on a little bit of a vacation together, I'm actually gonna be relaunching Average Joe Life into a completely new channel. So a lot of people really like the honest reviews I've been doing about the different investing apps here. I'm actually gonna be relaunching Average Joe Life into actually more everyday products. So the first two videos I have planned there are gonna be an honest review on Nectar mattresses. So if you've ever been looking at mattresses in a box solutions, I'm gonna be taking a look at Nectar. And I'm also gonna be taking a look at Anson Belt, which is another one of those really popular internet companies. They make those belts that don't have the holes in them that you just use the ratchet system. So if you're interested in my views, you know I'm not gonna just take money from a company and say, oh, this is great, like a lot of other reviews. I'm gonna be pretty harsh on them. So obviously we'll talk about the positives, we'll talk about the negatives there. I'll be relaunching Average Joe Life probably May 1st. But anyways, I've been David with Average Joe Investing. I will see you guys all very soon.